Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. The uh, paid request this time from Nate. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re reviews, randomness, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box under pretty much any of these videos. Now, Nate wanted me to review a script called Sprockets. Now for those who don't know, because I didn't know, uh, Sprockets is based on Mike Myers had this character of Dieter on Saturday Night Live. Now at that time I was out watching Saturday Night Live but I knew of it, I knew bits and pieces of it with Chris Farley, Adam Sandler, and, and this, uh, Chris Rock. I wasn't an avid watcher week for week, but I do know of the character he played. He was a German TV show talk show host, and the bid running dad was there was a monkey, and he would ask the guest, "Would you like to touch the monkey?" He touches the monkey, and the crowd goes crazy. As trying to be, I just stare stereotypes of German people and how serious they take things and uh, however the hell else want to put it now this is around the time this first draft was I believe 1999 and you know, by this point Wayne's World had come out was a huge hit there was a lot of other Saturday Night Live films sketches be made to movies you had Superstar you had Night at the Roxbury with Will Ferrell you had, oh, the, what was that, Love, Dr. Jack, no, God, I've forgotten some of them, to be honest, a lot of those films weren't that great, Wayne's World was good, others not so much, I think you had It's Pat was one, Stuart Saves His Family, I remember not being that bad. I remember Stuart saved his family being actually a decent one. But a lot of those SNL movies were pretty crappy. Which is why they kind of stopped doing it. Like, they're not all Wayne's World, and they're not, you know. Dan Stuart saves his family was one of the more decent ones. But the others, like Superstar, okay, she puts her hands under her armpits and sniffs it. And now nah, the Roxbury is meh. Like it, it was enough to warrant a movie, in my opinion. Now, if one understand, this of course is around the time when Austin Powers had come out and was a huge hit for Mike Myers. And there's a, I think Austin Powers two had come out as well. Because Austin Powers one was ninety seven. Austin Powers was Austin Powers 2 99? It was somewhere around there. I can't remember what year. But that was another huge hit. So Mike Myers kind of was able to do what he wanted. So okay, Wayne's World was a hit. And I'm getting this finan financial success with these Austin Powers movies. I'll take another character. You know, the TV show Sprockets, this character Dieter, this German talk show host. And he wrote it with Jack Handy and Michael McCullers. So they wrote the script. And apparently it was getting ready to shoot. Apparently it was getting very close to shooting. And then Mike Myers pulled out. And he said, I wasn't happy with the script. Which is ironic because you helped write the script. <laughs> like you helped write it. But then you don't want to do it. Now, the studio pretty much got pissed off and said, well, wait a minute, we spent all this money in pre-production, we spent all this money getting this stuff set up, uh, all this money paying you, uh, that's bullshit, we're going to sue you. And one thing led to another, and that's why <laughs> Mike Myers did Cat in the Hat. For what I understand, I could absolutely be wrong, but for what I understand, the reason he did the Cat in the Hat, which is a just a god awful movie is because they said you do this film or we're going to sue for every dollar you got so 
Now, I would not say I was a big fan of the script that I read, but would it have been better than The Cat in the Hat and The Love Guru? Probably. Because I would say, of the script, the second half was kind of funny. I don't know funny, but it was kind of fun. Helps that he did a Baywatch, David Hasselhoff, bit of a reference or two. In a way, as some people looked at this, it's kind of what you would get with Zoolander after this. Like the way the character is, and the quirky humor, and the cameos. Like in a way, you read this, you go, you know what? Zoolander would kind of go on and do this. Not exactly, of course, but I guess how you feel about Zoolander, that's up to you. I remember not minding the first Zoolander for what it was. But yeah, Mike Myers got sued and he had to do the cat in the hat. So despite what Mike Myers wants to say, oh yeah, I did it because I'm a fan of Dr. Seuss. No, you did it because you're a fan of your money and you don't want it taken away from you to be fucking broke. I think, one more quote, here's the thing about Mike Myers. I do think he's a talented guy. But I've heard many stories of him being a diva, being a fucking asshole. Uh, I there was a story I believe Fabio, the Italian Stan Fifty One, one of my good friends here on YouTube, told me a story he heard from people about how he wanted cream cheese or something, and people wouldn't let him have the one he wanted, and he had made this fucking hissy fit, diva drama. And that also is one of the reasons why he didn't work much throughout the years, is that he was apparently very, very hard to work with. For a while, he had a fallen out with Dana Carvey, and they only patched things up when they did that Wayne's World Super Bowl commercial. But apparently, Mike Myers didn't like sharing the spotlight with Dana Carvey on Wayne's World, which is why he wanted to do things on his own with Austin Powers and such. Uh, I know the director of Wayne's World 1, I think Penelope Spears, was that her? I know she had a bit old back and forth of Mike Myers, and I believe that's one of the reasons she did not get to do the sequel, Wayne's World 2, which only would have made that film better, because I'm not a fan of the sequel. I like Wayne's World 1 a lot. I think it's a very funny movie. I think Wayne's World 2 fucking sucks. I know there are fans who liked it, there are fans who liked it more than the first one. I just, I don't agree. I think Wayne's World 2 is awful. I love Wayne's World 1. I like So I Married an Axe Murderer. That's a film no one really talks about, but that's like the only time Mike Myers got to play like a regular schmo. Yeah, he's playing multiple characters because he plays like his own dad and, and such, but as the lead character, I can't think of any other movie where he plays just a regular guy regular schmo and the stories that he's with this girl but is she a murderer is she not a murderer is she just a butt case is she just eccentric so that's one of the reasons I like so I married an axe murderer but they, they, that did not do well but Austin Powers which I like the first one the second one I thought was a step down and the third one I'm not really a fan of at all I do think the first Austin Powers was the best one. Um, don't mind his voice work in Shrek. I'm trying to think what else he's done. I think he was in a film called 54, but I don't remember much about his, his role. Because I barely remember that film. But apparently it's just very hard to work with. And you know stuff like this and other stuff is... People didn't really want to deal with his deal with his ass. Now as for the script itself, I mean I'm not good at reading scripts because I'm not that used to reading scripts. But it starts off with Mike Myers character Dieter, who's a German guy, dreaming about, oh sometimes I dream and then sometimes I dream that I'm flying naked. And he's flying naked. It seems like he was trying to do that Austin Powers thing. Remember Austin Powers where... 
was the first or second one where he's going around and all these objects are hiding his dick. I have a feeling that's what this would have been. He's flying around and somehow it's hiding his privates and such. It shows Dieter's lifestyle, his, he only has black clothes, his entire kitchen is black. I guess the way they describe it, the first section of the film would, would have been in black and white. And then later he goes to America and then the film would be in color. Which could be an interesting idea that he's from this avant-garde cinema, G German expressionism, and then to the pop culture of you know, L.A., I actually didn't mind that idea. But like he gets a box of cereal, but it's just cigarettes that pours out. Uh, there's flashbacks of how he got his monkey claws. And this is stuff in the script, just to mention it. Like, flashback when he was a kid, he gets picked on, and other German kids are saying, Come, we'll shit in the pot and make a wheat child drink it. Or they piss on him. And apparently there would be scenes where they pissed on him when he was a kid. I mean, I, I guess that makes you laugh. But then they would have like a joke that's kind of funny. Like, the father dies and we did not have money to bury him. So we used his coffin as a table. And like they're sitting there doing their stuff and there's the table but it's the coffin of their dad. Like that has that maybe black humor as an Adam's family type of bleak humor. Okay, that push more of that stuff, less of you flying naked and urinating and, and all this other shit. So at one point his mom gets him a present. He wants a monkey really badly, but he gets an anvil. So then he meets a one-legged pornographer who offers him, I'll give you this monkey if I can have the anvil. And apparently the one-legged pornographer used the anvil for porn. Okay. So then it cuts to present day. He's in Germany. He has his TV show. There's the station manager. There's his trophy girlfriend that's not in it much. Uh, the weird nun who talks and then will go on to talk to like a person's possessed. That's the running gag. And Senior Squeeze Toy. I'm sitting there going, I'm visualizing this and yeah, that's the thing with the script. You can read a script and it'll, it sounds bad, but then with the way they do it because of the cast or because of the direction or because of the timing or Strips change all the time. Improv. Look at Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. If you read the strip to that, just imagine reading, okay, these two guys are in high school, and they go back in time, and they're using a telephone booth, and then they get Abraham Lincoln, and they get Genghis Khan. You go, this sounds fucking stupid. But then when you watch the movie, and you see the soundtrack, the music they put into it, the the people they cast, and the chemistry between the two leads. As outlandish of an idea it is, it works very well. So on this TV show, they interview the director, Wim Wenders. Avant-garde German director. And apparently they're hoping they get the real Wim Wenders. So then one day, the monkey gets kidnapped, taken. The audience liked the monkey, so the show goes down the tubes. He called by the kidnapper and finds out that it's in America. And yet you have stuff like, before that, before, I think before he finds out that the monkey's taken, they're waiting for what's going on. There's some guy on the show that showcases vomit art, where they puke and they use it for art. Uh, or they, hey, this show right now is beating out Baywatch. 
-hmm. And Baywatch becomes very prevalent later on. And here's a present. We found a dead homeless guy and dressed him up as a clown for you. I, I did an Adams Family and if someone like Raul Julia and the timing, like maybe that kind of weird quirky humor can work, but when you read it, it's like, I don't know. So he goes to America, and it says in the script they're hoping to have Neil Diamond. We come into America. Which I like that song. I'm like, well, I heard it in Born in East L.A. I heard it after this in Saving Silverman with Jack Black. But I do like the song. Apparently there'd be a lot of other songs like, I love L.A. We love it. I did black and white in Germany, but in the U.S. it'd be in color. That's an interesting idea. And then the second half of the script, you know, I was kind of not minding it. Uh, he meets this monkey tracker named Daryl, and it would depend who you got to play that. Like when he gets into the America, they're looking for Mike Myers' character. Where is he? Uh, he's strip searched. Why the strip search? He requested it. In fact, when he's done, he goes back and goes back in the line again. Why well, okay, that kind of made me laugh. Or m meeting his distant family members, Bob and his kids. It even is written down, Dieter's cousin Bob, think Will Ferrell. Um, I'm sure Will Ferrell would have said yes because, you know, he wasn't a huge star at this point. I mean, I think this is before Elf and other stuff, so I think he would have done it just to work with Mike Myers. At one point, he's on the set of Baywatch, and he would have had David Hasselhoff. And David Hasselhoff, I mean, he's been known to... He absolutely would have done it, because he does a lot of cameos. I mean, he was in the Baywatch movie with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, which that's a movie I keep forgetting that The Rock was in. I mean, he was in the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. I know there's a few others I can't remember, though. Like he's a guy that he seems pretty frequent. I don't know if he had done that type of cameo at this time, though. That this would have been made. I'm trying to remember. So pretty much Dieter, Mike Myers' character, and the tractor, they go search for this monkey, and they go to Chinatown, they go to this and this place. Apparently, Dick Van Patten was a former lover of Mike Myers' character, and they would have had Dick Van Patten in the movie, which that would have been kind of strange. But if Dick Van Patten was in it and was in on the joke, that that might be kind of funny. Of course, they put in like a love interest, this lady who's like a assistant to David Hasselhoff. At one point, they go to Hasselhoff's place, which there's a party. And I don't know if they got all of it, but they wrote down, like, here's a cameo by Tom Haynes, and here's a cameo by, you know, Ron Howard and Brian Grazer, and who knows if they could get all those guys in it. I mean, they got Tom Cruise and Steven Spielberg for Austin Powers 3. Um, was it 3 or 2? I think it was three. The yeah, it was the movie within the movie at the beginning of Goldmember, and Tom Cruise, I think Greta Paltrow and Danny DeVito, and it was directed by Spielberg. <laughs> so I think it was the third one. So I mean, if they're able to get them, then maybe they could have gotten. Gotten uh, these other guys. And then he pitches like this thing to Brian Grazer, the producer, about, here's a film, Old Yeller, but it's called Two-Headed Old Yeller. And then apparently would have cut to 
the film being made, like his idea, it's old yeller, but he's got two heads. Like stupid shit like that, and some of the other stuff. Like later on, he just with the FBI, and they gotta put a wire on him, so he goes to his cabin because he thinks the kidnappers there to do an exchange. But they, there, a raccoon attacks him, and he pisses himself. And because he pisses himself, it shorts out the wire. It's shit like that that made me go, I don't know if this would have worked either. Maybe, a, sadly, it would be less cringeworthy than the cat in the hat. Or the love guru. But also, depending on how the Dieter character would be. Because I've seen those... I didn't even mention this at the beginning of the video. I've seen those sketches, and I wasn't really big on those sketches in SNL. I mean, they're on YouTube, I watch a couple of them, but I'm like, I'm not really a fan of this. I don't know, I don't think this character can carry a film. He seems very glum and depressing, and like I said, I don't know if he could carry an entire film and the, without people being kind of glum and depressed along with this guy. And at the end of the film... He doesn't really get to do anything, meaning they find out it is David Hasselhoff, but it's his evil twin brother, Hasselhoff. So, okay, that's a, that's a goofy but kind of fun idea. I, and David Hasselhoff can have a bit of fun to play that type of role. And so, the real Hasselhoff, hey, you can use one of my cars as Kit from Knight Rider. And then they're driving up, but then Dieter's a bad driver, so then the monkey has to drive. But then Dieter doesn't really do anything. By this point, his new love interest is taken in by the evil Hasselhoff. But you'd have to work in, like, Dieter has to find a way to enjoy happiness, to learn to enjoy happiness, to have some kind of character development for this. But they don't really do that. And then again, he... Apparently, Mike Myers at one point said the character was too passive. If that's the case, you look at this ending, you can understand why. Because the monkey's doing the driving, the the car just gets wrecked, and then the girl runs off, and the brother, evil Hassel brother, dies. Dieter didn't do anything, and then he's labeled a hero, but he didn't he didn't do anything. And then the tone would be kind of shifty because at one point we're led to believe that Daryl, the the guy who not really becomes Dieter's friend but helps him trap the monkey, he just killed off. And there's a funeral for the character. And I'm like, well, that's kind of a damper on things. So it gets into, well, what kind of... That kind of reminds me of the original idea of Ace Ventura Pet Detective, where that was supposed to be some darker moments in that film. I remember when Ace Ventura has the thing at the end of the film, the anchor, and he lets it go. The reason it cuts away like it does is because in the original, it decapitated those two henchmen. It decapitated their heads. And then Ace, like, and runs off. Or there was another scene where there was a nightmare sequence where birds got on Ace's face and like pecked his face off. I can see why that stuff was cut out because yeah, you know, there'd be people that enjoy it because it's fucked up, but it doesn't fit with the goofy nature of it. Now you can make it work. Um, Austin Powers, Dr. Evil, his let someone out you know, the chair the thing goes back and the guys burn up and Will, Fer Will Ferrell keeps streaming in pain and but it keeps going and going and going so because it's going so long it's a bit funny it can work but it's a very thin line to <laughs> it's a tightrope to cross over on that and then the end of the script is uh, the monkey wants to stay in America. Dieter goes back to Germany. He's depressed. 
he tries to commit suicide, he lands in the truck safely, then he turns and there's the monkey and then there's his kind of girlfriend from America. I don't even know why they're there. They just mentioned that they took a road trip in America. But I said, well, why are you two here anyway? And it doesn't seem like the main character learned anything, didn't learn either happiness or didn't learn that actually it is what I am doing is right. And I should be who I am or... Oh, you know, I should learn a little bit of happiness. There is no growth they tear. There, there's nothing that comes up upon that. And because I'm not really big on the source material, because I'm not sure how this tear could work in a 90, 100 minute feature, I know I don't think this would have been that good of a comedy either. Being better than Canada had doesn't, isn't saying much. Would it have its fans? Yes. Like every movie has its fans. I just... I don't see... I did the set you have in America. Got some little chuckles on me. And some OT David Hasselhoff. Evil to OT. That's kind of goofy and funny. But... I mean, if Michael Myers were able to turn it... Turn that dial up. Crank it up for the movie version. And... Made the character so unique that it's entertaining even on the off crappy moments. I don't know. I don't know if it would have worked out. I mean, gun to my head, which would I rather see this or Cat in the Hat? This. Because I've seen Cat in the Hat and that was getting crappy. But I can kind of see why my Myers didn't want to do it either. I'm like, does it have to be a character though? Can't it be just your regular self and X, Y, or Z crazy situations? Like, does it have to be you playing a quirky character? Why does it only have to be that? But yeah, maybe because So I Married Nats Murder failed, he's like, I'm not going to do that anymore. I don't know. Okay, that failed, that doesn't mean it would always fail, but, and yeah, I actually don't mind that movie, but, hey, oh well. Either way, it didn't get made, the script's out there for people who want to read it for yourself. Uh, with that said, thanks for watching, take care, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.